Let's bow, family. Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Master. We thank you, Lord, for all things. Because all things do work together for good for them that love you, who are called according to thy purpose. We thank you, God, for the peace that you provide, the joy in the midst of our tears, and the peace in the middle of our pain. We say thank you, Lord. Father, since you don't sleep, nor do you slumber, there is nothing that we're going to convey today that, God, you don't already know. But we come by to say thank you. Thank you for the privilege of being in the house of worship one more time. God, you didn't have to spare our lives, but God, we're glad that you did, Master. You watched over us as we slept in slumber through the night, and you touched us divinely, God, to give us another chance, another day, another opportunity to praise you even more. Continue to cover the bereaved families, those families who are hurting because loved ones are hurting. Bless them right now, God. Bless them, Jesus. Wherever there's confusion, God, Father, you provide clarity and revelation, Master. Bring everything, God, into subject of your word. And then, Father, today we ask, God, that you would speak to our hearts, God, concerning the glory of Christ, the power of Christ his might, his wisdom, and his strength. God is now Lord, and we'll be ever so mindful and careful to return all the praises, all the glory, all the honor unto thee. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we say amen. I want you to know, family, there's nobody like Jesus. Uh, we're going to read in 1 Kings, family, if you don't mind, chapter 10, verse 1 through 13. Uh, if you don't mind, we can read together if you don't mind. Verse 1, the queen of Sheba heard about Solomon's fame connected with the name of the Lord and came to test him with riddles. She came to Jerusalem with a large entourage and camels bearing spices, gold in great abundance, and precious stones. She came to Solomon and spoke to him about everything that was on her mind. So Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too difficult for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba observed all of Solomon's wisdom, the palace he had built, the food at his table, his servant's resident, his attendant servant in their attire, his cupbearers, his burnt offering, and he offered at the Lord's temple. It took her breath away. She said to the king, The report I heard in my country about your words and about the wisdom is true, but I didn't believe the report until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, I was not even told half. Your wisdom and prosperity far exceed the report I heard. How happy are your men. How happy are these servants of yours. Always stand in your presence hearing your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God. He delighted in you and put you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to carry out justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king four and a half tons of gold, a great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did such a quantity of spices arrive as those the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. In addition, harem fleet that carried the gold and offer brought, offer brought large quantities of oak, oak wood and pre precious stone. The king made the oak wood into steps for the Lord's temple and the king's palace and into lair and harps for the singers. Never before did such would arrive and like King Solomon gave the Queen Sheba her every desire whatever she asked besides what he had given her out of his roll of bun bounty then she along with her servants returned to her own country may the Lord have a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his word 
Uh, family, we have all longed from time to time to meet somebody that truly takes your breath away. Uh, in this particular message, I want you to know it's more than the Solomon I need you to focus in on. But because we are in a physical state, we have to somehow look at humanity to see the glory of God. You'll find that in this account of text that's in 1 Kings, we see the main character is, is Solomon, but uh, the queen of Sheba had heard about the gold and about the wealth and the riches and the wisdom uh, that Solomon had. And what she heard intrigued her enough to take a pilgrimage to come see if what she heard was true. But also I want you to know in Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 42, it is said that Jesus says in his own heart, one that is greater than Solomon is here. And so Solomon sits on the throne of Israel. And you know that story that his mom, Bathsheba, and his father, King David, uh, was blessed again to have him after their calamity had kind of faltered and God dealt with David the way he needed to. Where Bathsheba gave birth to another son after David married her, and his name was Solomon. Uh, Solomon, when the Lord appeared to him and asked Solomon, what do, what can I give you? What do you want? And, and Solomon could have asked for the, the riches and the goals and all the other things that most people would ask for in a tangible way. But, but Solomon asked that God would bless him with wisdom. And God not only blessed Solomon with wisdom, but he blessed him with knowledge and understanding. He blessed him so well that even that which he didn't ask for, God still gave it to him. If you remember, God had told David that, listen, I, I can't have you rebuild my temple because you are a man of war. Uh, you have shed blood, and so I will let you accumulate the things necessary to build my temple, but your son Solomon will. And so now this King Solomon, he, he was known around the region and, and people talked about Solomon's wealth and talked about the work that he was doing. And, and when people had issues like the, the two prostitutes, if you will, or the two women who both had babies, if you remembered, and through the night one of the babies died that the one of the women had. And so she woke up and realized her baby was dead, so she took her dead baby and put it in the bed with the other woman and took this other woman's baby and brought to her breast to nurse. In the morning, the story goes to say when the woman woke up and the baby wasn't moving and she looked at the baby and said, well, this is not my child, this is your child. Well, that case went up before Solomon, if you remember. And, and Solomon, in the wisdom that he had, both women claimed to uh, have the mother right to the living child. And so Solomon, in his wisdom, said, well, get a sword. And let's cut the living baby in two, and you get half, and you get half. Well, one mother screamed out, say, no, don't do that. You let her have the child. Solomon looked at it and said, well, you are really the mother. And so Solomon was known for wisdom. And there are people in your life that you can call that give you sound advice and sound counsel. They got wisdom. But they might not have all the wealth that they might desire because people talk about people that have a whole lot of money. And that's why you have so many television shows, the rich and famous, the, you know, uh, even the rappers, they take you in their house and show you their big this. And the entertainers, they take you and let you see, you know, the $45 million mansion, the 28,000 rooms, the 58 thousand restrooms and show you the exotic cars and all that kind of stuff and people are intrigued about that they spend more time talking about other people's stuff amen be upset when they get back to their apartment come on i say amen lord have mercy 
But when it come down, be you here, you understand that. So when it come down to that, you realize Solomon had got a good reputation. So the queen wanted to come. The queen of Sheba had wanted to come. And, and, and it was about a 1,200-mile trek because uh, from Jerusalem. So she said, we're going to make this pilgrimage because I got to see this man. Now watch this. Now she had some issues, some things in her life that she needed some answers to. So she's going to make the, the pilgrimage. But guess what? She didn't come empty-handed. Any kind of crazy. She hear about the riches that this man had and she's going to bring him some more. Come on now, say amen. Isn't it a blessing? Well, when she finally arrived to where he was and, and, and Solomon was very gracious unto her and, and she tells him, say, listen, I heard about your great riches. I heard about what you have. I heard about the works that you have done and the buildings that you have built. I heard about your wisdom. And so she just going on and on and on. And then she began to give him some riddles and give him some questions uh, to let him know, that, listen, I, I, I want to make sure you're on point. And then, but Solomon at every point, every question, every riddle, every time she opened up her mouth, Solomon gave her a prudent answer of truth. She was so overwhelmed is that she also said, well, I heard also about your worship. I heard about the God you serve, and I'm, and I'm curious about the God that you serve. She wanted to get deeper. She wanted to know, Solomon, how did you actually get on this footing, and, and, and who gave you all this wisdom, and who provided all these resources to you? Even though I'm bringing this to you, I, I want to find out how things are working in your life. So Solomon was one that reminded her about the God that he served and, and the God that he served in Matthew chapter 12 when you look at the scriptures carefully in verse 42 Jesus brought Solomon up in conversation and say many people were looking to Solomon but one is here that's greater than Solomon and I want to share this with you because sometime family we look at tangible things. We look at men and women that have material things and we somehow put them in chairs above Christ himself. But I want you to know that everything Solomon had, God gave it to him. Can I just put a pin right there? And so when you, amen, looking at the idols that's in the land and how God has blessed them, and you're curious like Bathsheba was, not Bathsheba, but Sheba was, you realize God has put people in your life not just to, amen, entertain you or excite you or put you in an awe moment. If they're supposed to point the way, say, let me tell you where I got this from. Let me tell you who's working in my life to provide these things for me. And Solomon had enough sense to go back and say, you know, the God that I serve, the God that I worship, the temple that I built, he's the one that's, amen, behind what I'm able to do. We are not to exalt Solomon at all, but we are here to lift up the one who is greater than Solomon. Do you know him? His name is Jesus. Come on, I say amen. Now watch this family. There's nobody like Jesus anywhere in the world. He is, amen, all that Solomon was times 10,000 more. Come on now, say amen. So when we think about this, when you think about who you serve and why you serve and why you get up every morning and why you say your breakfast and why you say your prayers, say, say your prayers before you eat your breakfast, why you do all of those things is because there's one greater than Solomon that's in the land. And many times the thing that makes us sick is that we're putting our eyes upon things that has no power eternal other than that which God give it to live and to breathe and to die and live eternally with him. Don't you know any time God shows up in your life, you need to make a statement, either a joy, either a shout, either a amen. You ought to do something to acknowledge that there's nobody like him. Now watch this family. Now the queen of Sheba, when she arrived in Jerusalem, she was astounded. She was amazed about the wealth and she saw his possession. She saw the provision that has been made. She saw how the people were joyful around Solomon, his servants, his cupbearers. They all had a smile on their face and she was, amen, struck with that. She said, this is awesome. People like being around you. Come on now, say amen. I like this. 
Do you not know? Do you not know? When you're in the house of God, there ought to be a joy inside of you. So if somebody come into the house of God because you're in the house of God, you ought to have some joy on the inside that they say you like to be around Christian folks. You like to be in the presence of God because that's what I'm looking for. She was amazed. Even the servants carried themselves with joy with a spirit of celebration in their life. But also she watched something else. She watched how Solomon, in his own way, always went back to a process of glory to God because Solomon was wise enough to know where his help came from. Now can you imagine just momentarily Solomon going back and thinking about his mother and father and their calamity and the things about his brother who had actually raped a sister now because now he knows he's David's son so that also making Hanan's brother and Absalom brother and, Ta and Tamar brother, right? Now, now he could have went back in that mind frame and, and replayed the, the, the folly and the foolishness of his own bloodline but he understood that in in spite of all of the people around me that have kind of done some things that is not in a glorious way to the Lord, the Lord still looked upon me and found favors in my life. There's some people in here that you are a Joseph or you are a Josephine in your life. You've been chosen by God divinely just to be a shining light in your family. God didn't, amen, insulate you with blessings and gifts and all those things just for you to go ahead and say, well, look at me. Look what I got. Look how I did it. Listen, God is in the infinite wisdom of letting you know that you give him glory and praise in spite of and never, amen, allow the stuff you have to have you. Come on, I say amen. If there's any point you can get today, it's okay to have stuff. Have it all, but don't let it have you. Come on, I say amen. Don't get so caught up where you can't breathe, that you can't have no joy. You're always on pins and needles. Come on, I say amen. It's nothing wrong. With having, just don't let it have you. So when she started, she said, my goodness. Now Solomon, she started giving this stuff to Solomon. Now Solomon was already a billionaire. I mean, in, we're not we're talking about Old Testament texts. Today he would have crazy money. Come on, I say amen. Crazy money. You know, Michael Jordan is worth about $1.9 billion, and, you know, that's a lot of money, amen. But listen, Solomon, amen, amen, and then Bill Gates is worth this, and this poor Warren Buffett is worth this, but Solomon would trump all of them. He had crazy money. He could just go out there, and I'm going to take up Texas, and I'll take up Louisiana, and give me California. Just give me the United States. Come on now, say amen. Give me China too while you're at it. Throw in Japan while it's there. No, no, take China back. They got some problems right now. I'll come back, and I'll negotiate later on. Come on now, say amen. Solomon had crazy money. So God had blessed him that way. And then here come some realities of the king. What's more important, she realized that he was wealthy, but yet he was connected. Sheba realized that this man, total wisdom, possessions out of the wahoos, had people around him that admired him and loved him, servants who were happy just to be around him, and had all of these things, but she said, you're connected. You know how profound it is for you to be connected? And I'm not talking about the people. Because it didn't say in the text, but it did say she was struck by Solomon. Now we also know Solomon had some wives. So I wanted to know, Dick Hunt, how what struck she was talking about. You know, it's one thing to look at the man's possession, but I, you know, because she could have been adding them ducks together, say, if I take my ducks and add his ducks, and, boy, we can have some quack quacking in here. Come on, I say amen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But it's good to be connected. And then she, amen, realized this man, now that he is actually 
answered my riddles and I've blessed him with this. I've blessed him with that. Solomon in turn blessed her. You know, when I look at that, it reminds me when Jesus says, there's one that's greater than Solomon. And then it hit me, no matter what you do in the kingdom of God to advance the cause of Christ, it's recorded and God bless you with everything you desire. Everything you desire, God bless you with. It says that she left to go back home to what we did modern day Yemen, went back home, and she went back home informed. She was happy. Uh, she was upbeat. Uh, she was wonderfully blessed. And now she has a friend. Now she has a friend. That means she can pick up her cell phone and call Solomon. That's why I'm going to close that, Pastor Hoban. She has a friend. And I told you that's one greater than Solomon that's here. Do you know when you're connected, you have a friend? You have a friend that is still closer than any family member? You have a friend that's not going to forsake you? You have a friend that is a promise keeper? You have a friend that will visit you any day, any hour, any moment. Do you have a friend that you can call his name at any time? You can call him and the line is never too busy. You have a friend. Now, even in our physical state, we, we do have friends, but even through fleshly friends, we're limited on what we can do in the friendship. But you have a friend. That's going to be there. You have a friend that you can actually just rest ashore, give all of your trials and tribulations, all of your problems. When you fall short, you can call your friend. And guess what your friend won't do? Your friend won't judge you. Your friend will allow the spirit of the blood of Christ to justify you. You, you, the friend will come in and, and, and take your punishment. Even though the judge have come down and, and, and you've been found guilty and they say, well, I'm going to give you 20 years or, or 30 years and then your friend steps up and say, I'm going to do the time for him. Come on now, say amen. You go on and live your life and be free right now. Come on now, say amen. Amen. They said you worked the death penalty, but your friend come back and said, no, bring me to the chamber. I will go ahead and die for them. I'm talking about the friend that stay closer than any brother. Sheba came to look for Solomon, and there was one more powerful, more knowledgeable, more wisdom than Solomon, the son of the living God. His name is Jesus Christ, more powerful. She came for Solomon, but there's one greater than Solomon. And when you know there's one that's greater than Solomon, who should you bring your cares to? Who should you lay all your burdens to? Who should you bow down if you're going to bow down to anybody? Who are you going to bow down to? Solomon is one, but Christ is all the Solomon. Think about it for a moment. So family, when you look at your life, and you look at what you have to do, and you know you have a friend, when you have a friend, you don't have to fret. Even when money is strange, your friend got you. You got people in your life say, listen, let's go get a bite to eat. You say, well, you know, I don't get paid. You say, girl, come, you better get in this car. But they're saying, I got you. Come on, I say amen. We got people like that in our life. But God said, I got you. Wherever I go, you're going to eat what I eat. Wherever, we, wherever we're doing, you're going to participate with me. And then he, joined, he asks you to participate in his work. And then he blesses you for the labor in the kingdom. God blesses those. When Sheba left, she left there with more than she brought. Anytime you hang with Jesus... 
you will always get more. You will always take home more than what you brought. And that is what Sheba, Queen Sheba, that's what she received. But how much more will you receive? Not only with the friend you don't have to fret, which also means you don't have to worry or you don't have to stress. Then you're able to introduce others to your friend. You know, it's one thing to have people you introduce to your pastor. But don't put your pastor in your friend's seat. What a friend we have in Jesus. Dr. Earl, you know that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus? Y'all know that song? Is this the is this the, 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 the church that know the song? What a friend we have in Jesus. Y'all know the song. So you guys gonna be the choir today with this song. What a friend. We have in Jesus. The doors of the church is now open. Hi, I'm Walter August. I want to invite you to join our email list and also plan your trip to Bethel's Family. Bethel's Family is an exciting church in the Fondren Southwest area of our city of Houston. We're impacting the local community and also global community. Bethel's Family have every ministry available to you that meet every family need through multi-generations. So whether it's a pregnant mom all the way to a senior adult and everything in between. And we're also one of the greater ministries in Houston that's meeting the physical, emotional, spiritual needs of the entire person. We not only impact people in the Houston area, but also we're national and also we're global. Join our email list by clicking the button below to plan your trip to Bethel's family. Thank you for taking this opportunity to visit with us here at Bethel's family.